Okay, hello, craft beer professionals. It is Julie Rhodes here um, joining you this morning. I hope you've had a lot of coffee and you're ready to go because um, we are going to go through some pretty serious information today. You can see that I'm already sharing my screen with everybody. Hopefully you can see it. Um, if we run into any issues, just let us know in the comments and Andrew and I will get it sorted out. Um, as best as we can. Uh, for those of you that know me, you can probably see that I am not in my typical home office uh, right now. I am actually on location um, at uh, Common House Ale Works um, in North Charleston, South Carolina, um, and working out of one of my clients' tap rooms. Um, so thank you to Pierce and the crew over there. Shout out to them and letting me take up space and use use the Wi-Fi over here. <laughs> All right, so let's get right into things. Um, I hope that everybody is super pumped for some data-driven conversation here. Um, we are going to go through the ABCs of IRI and other data sources um, that you hopefully want to know about. Um, I'm also spoiled because I normally have two screens at home and I am using a secondary screen for my notes. There is no way that I can memorize all this stuff. So if you do see me glancing down, I am uh, not on Twitter or anything, but actually referencing my notes. So, um, all right, this is a total joke right here. This is um, a tiny bit about me, <laughs> but what you really need to know is that um, I have been in the beer and cider industry and the service industry for over 20, uh, over 20 years, over two decades. So um, I've got a BA in marketing. I'm the owner and operator of Not Your Hobby Marketing Solutions. I'm a strategic business consultant for beer and cider companies, um, small to medium sized companies only. Um, I specialize in helping people with their retail sales strategies, their digital marketing plans, and also with distribution management. Um, I am also a business writer. I'm the industry editor, editor for Porch Drinking, um, as well as contributing to quite a few other industry publications. I am heavily involved with Pink Boots Society, um, I am a Brewers Association mentor. Uh, I also sit on the BA DEI Marketing Communication Subcommittee and all that fun stuff. So I am going to stop talking about myself. We have a lot to cover, so I'm just going to go ahead and dive in right here. Um, a little bit of what we are going to cover today for the most part so that you know what you're getting um, and determine whether or not you want to hang out with me today. Uh, we are going to go over what exactly is syndicated data um, where that syndicated data comes from in terms of how do you get it and who offers it and how much it costs. Uh, we're going to talk about what syndicated data actually measures and how you can use it. We're going to talk about why you actually need to be paying attention to syndicated data in today's marketplace. And then also just talking about how you can actually use it from a brewery perspective. All right, um, so what the hell is syndicated data, right? <laughs> syndicated data is basically retail sales data collected from the scanning of UPCs um, in the wholesale channel. Um, it is also known, this is why it's also known as scan data, because it literally is uh, like a tiny tracking device um, that comes through a store's records um, when you scan something across the little uh, laser scanner, right? So when that happens, um, that store is actually collecting information about you. And in turn, that gets turned over um, to data collection agencies or data aggregation companies. Um, it basically helps companies uh, collect this data, analyze it, and put it together in trends so that you can analyze consumer purchase behavior. Why is that so important? Because we run beer businesses, we don't have beer hobbies, hence the name of my company here, um, but we are actually selling things, which means you need to know how to actually track consumer purchase data or retail sales data from the marketplace that you're operating in or looking at marketplaces that you would like to expand to in the future. Um, the, the two most well-known uh, syndicated data companies that are out there are Nielsen and IRI, which is actually just short for Informational Resources Incorporated. Um, if you're in the organic or health food sector, there is also um, a data company called Spins. So if you do a lot of uh, work with like Whole Foods, um, Sprouts, you know, places like that, that's if you're in kind of the health beverage sector, 
Um, you're going to be also looking at spins information as well. Um, now, something to be said about this, um, the aggregation companies that are out there do not necessarily include every single retail outlet. Um, there are certain ones that are outside like typical um, example sets, like standard sets. So when you are requesting reports um, from these companies, you need to have a very good idea of what retailers you want to look at and what channels you want to look at as well before you ask for reports, because most of those reports cost money and sometimes they fall out of the spectrum. Like um, there are ranking reports that you can get from IRI that might have a multi outlet look at the market, but it might not include like Walmart. So you want to be very clear about what you're asking for when it comes to these reports. All right, next, how do you actually get your hands on these reports? Because they would be really helpful to have. Um, usually category-wide data reports are pretty accessible for free. So um, if you're a brewery association member and you attend uh, the Collab Hour webinars, a lot of the times Bart Watson will get on there. He has some really great slides and data. Of course, he's a genius statistician. Um, he has access to IRI and Nielsen data. He compiles those for you conveniently and will present like market-wide trends. Um, the other places that you might be able to find them are uh, if you're a cider person and you're part of the American Cider Association. As a member of that, you're also provided Nielsen data, IRI data as well. Um, you can also catch the occasional free webinar from FinTech um, or from the NBWA, which is the National Beer Wholesalers Association. Um, and there are also other consultants out there, um, like myself, uh, like Don at Three Tier Beverages um, and Bump Williams Consulting that do multiple webinars for free that you can join that actually uh, will show you some trends and some overall category data just in the craft beer space or by package, by style, things like that. Um, another place that you can go to is actually Brewbound and there is also uh, Sightlines Plus as a paid service. Um, if you're a Brewbound insider, there is something called Data Club that you can go to that gives you a lot of great reports and trends based on syndicated data. Um, if you are a Sightlines Plus member, which is part of the Good Beer Hunting like collective umbrella, um, that is a paid for service, but is very helpful. Um, Brian Roth is a wealth of information when it comes to um, Nielsen and IRI updates just about the general market. Um, and even right here in CBP presentations, obviously I'm talking about this today. I'm not really gonna go through any trends today. I just wanna give everybody an idea of the ABCs of this stuff, just the basics, like how to read it, what does it look like, what kind of data points you get with it. You know, Specifically, I'm just gonna stay in that arena. Um, plus, honestly, I wanted to show everybody examples of some of this data in action. The problem is, is that since this data costs money, and I have a strict um, NDA privacy policy with my clients that have access to this. I am not going to be showing any specific reports because I, uh, that is private uh, information, um, business-based information for the companies that I work with. So I'm gonna be showing some very generic examples to give you an idea of what's going on, but please know that you won't see specific examples of like the craft beer market or reports for like a certain brand, things like that, because it just wouldn't be ethically correct. So, all right, you can get brand specific information though. Literally it's as easy as reaching out to IRI or reaching out to Nielsen and just pinging them and say, hey, I'm interested in getting brand specific reports. Um, those do offer a huge advantage. The thing is, and I'm not gonna sugarcoat this, it is a ridiculous amount of money it is very, very expensive. But the thing is, specific data is gonna make you specific revenue. So you have to kind of look at the trade-off, like where you wanna be in the market, where you wanna expand to, uh, what kind of accounts you're working with, um, things like that, like how valuable is it for you to know the trends of what's going on with your specific brand so that you can continue to grow your portfolio. Um, I will tell you this much, it, in the very, very low, low region, you're looking at a few thousand dollars um, all the way up to, you know, six figures a year for people to get continuous reports all the time. Usually that's reserved for regional and large craft brands. Obviously, macro brands utilize this information all the time. 
Um, the other thing that I want to mention here, though, is uh, for years, I was a huge fan of a company called Armadillo Insights. Um, I know some people on this call might have used this before. Um, I, I love the way the data is presented. Um, Armadillo Insights is now part of FinTech. Um, so if anybody is curious about a really wonderful tool that you can use to look at some of these trends um, and get brand specific stuff, you might want to check out the competitive market analysis tool um, from FinTech. It's a really nice dashboard. Um, they didn't bribe me to say that. I just really like the tool. <laughs> so um, you can also access some Nielsen data through uh, working with VIP iDig. Um, that's another method if anybody's working with them already. That is through uh, the Beer Institute as well. And then also if you are working with a consultant like myself, you might have access to brand specific information, but it just depends. You might just want to ask to see if you have access to any uh, scan data or syndicated data trends. All right. So what the hell does syndicated data or scan data actually measure? Um, basically four things. Um, it measures sales. It measures distribution, it measures price, and it measures promotion. Um, so typically, sales are expressed as dollar sales. Um, so you'll see a lot of reports that, and again, I wish I had an example that I could put in front of you, but you'll see two columns. It'll say, uh, you know, dollar sales in like millions for your specific like case of that item. Um, and then you'll see a percent change over last year. That is pretty typical for the format of what it is. It's usually two years of data, one over the other. Um, I will warn you, we'll talk about time periods here in a second. It gets a little wonky because it goes by weeks um, and the months are set up a, a little bit differently. Um, but just be conscious that it's usually one big time period over the uh, previous big time period so that you can see the percent change and whether there's a growth or decline. Um, the other thing that sales can be expressed in is case equivalents or what are called um, equivalized sales. Um, I say case equivalents because we're in the liquid alcohol space. That's how we measure everything for the most part. Um, if it's food or some other kind of consumer packaged good, it's measured in a different way. Um, but that's usually how we'll see. This is a thing um, that's not typical for like a standard ranking report that you might ask for from one of these companies. Um, so know that you might have to ask for that, especially to be put in your report that you want to see things as dollar sales and that you also want to see them as equivalent sales as well so that you can measure the growth and volume. Um, distribution is measured in variance of what's called ACV, which is also called all commodity value. I'm going to go into that here more um, in just a second, but basically it gives you a ranking of how far your brand like a big amount of dollars that your brand is generating. So obviously, um, the higher that is, the more distribution you have, but it can be drilled down into other measures to measure the depth and the breadth of what your distribution in that market actually looks like. Um, price is measured. Uh, this is a big one. Know that the price that is displayed in scan data is the price of your product at the register. It is not what the retailer pays for your case. So if you're looking at a case of say like six packs, it's gonna be whatever the retail price is of those four six packs that are in a case um, instead of what that retailer paid for that case like through the door. So that's what it measures. And again, there's always a comparison period, right? So like the, you know, the price that's coming in um, versus the price over the previous time period. And then finally promotion. Promotion measures when something is going that's like special going on that's not typical like regular things this could be um, and this varies from state to state depending on what your laws are um, and also what programming um, you have in place and that is uh, any type of promotion so it could be um, some kind of uh, trade programming um, activation you know, uh, display programming, it could be a special discount price, it could be quantity discounts, like any of that kind of stuff. Um, the cool thing about this and all these typical measures is that not only can you get access to your brand, but you're also going to get access to your competitors' brands as well um, when you do pay for this data. So it's really, really powerful stuff to have in your corner. Um, I will say this, not every single craft brand needs 
syndicated data. So if you're watching this uh, right now <laughs> and you're thinking to yourself like, oh crap, how am I supposed to afford something like that? I'll tell you this much, you know you need syndicated data and scan data it's when you start playing in the arena of like national accounts and chain sales. Um, the reason it's so powerful to have, and you don't have to have it right off the bat. There are other measures that you can use um, to provide for retail, to provide numbers for retail buyers that can justify why it makes sense to carry your brand in their outlet. Um, if you are any, using any type of sales data reporting tool, which I'm going to shake my finger at everybody and tell you that you should be all the time, um, you can figure out things like volume and velocity and price points and things like that. The thing, the, the biggest advantage to having access to scan data is that you can compare your brand with the rest of the market. So you're looking at trends that are going on with competitors, whether by brand or even just by category, like seeing how you're competing in the space of IPAs or pale ales or sours, whatever it might be, or even looking at things like, how am I doing in the grocery channel? How am I doing in the convenience sector? How am I doing in drug stores? Um, and hopefully by now you've gotten a feel for the type of market segment that I am talking about. And yes, you are correct in thinking that scan data is on uh, off-premise centered. Um, the reason for that is that the UPC actually has to be scanned for that to be rung up. If you are interested in getting on-premise data, um, then that is something that you would need to go through a different company for. Um, those companies are usually folks like FinTech, uh, Nielsen CGA, um, maybe your point of sale system um, like arrived or honestly just keeping track of what your on-premise sales are in-house, but know that this is mainly for off-premise and this is relevant to that sector, all right? Um, and the reason it's actually so good to have this, um, da these data sets like at your fingertips is when you are working with national accounts and you're working with chain buyers, what you're basically saying to them is, I know how you make your buying decisions and I'm gonna provide you with the data that you need, the information that you need to make an educated decision about what kind of category assortment that you want to carry um, in your chain of stores, pretty much. It's kind of like social proof um, with marketing, but the sales version of this. It's a way of saying, you know I'm gonna talk really great about my brand, but here's data to actually back it up that it will sell, it will come off the shelf. I see your consumers, I know what they look like, and I think your customers are gonna match up with our customers in a really successful way. Um, so looking at things like uh, different buying conditions, whether it's um, a certain geography, like a certain grouping of stores that you wanna to expand to, um, looking at a certain class of trade, whether it's a dollar store or a health food market, um, looking at things like size, like everybody right now is talking about how well 19.2 like stove pipes are doing in the C-Store channel. Um, and then also it could be by style, right? So people are also, you know, the buzzwords are kind of like imperial IPAs, um, you know, American wheat beers, sours, high ABV offerings, things like that. This is where that kind of data comes from. And being able to have brand specific data like that in your back pocket is a really powerful thing to bring to like a meeting with a chain buyer. All right, so you have all this stuff, right? All this stuff. How is it organized? Like, what does it actually look like? How is it presented? Um, there are some basic dimensions for organization within an IRI, like scan data report, right? Or Nielsen. Um, those basically, basically there's four dimensions. So there's product, um, there is market, there is period, and there are facts. Um, so I want to go through these each kind of briefly so that you know exactly what I'm talking about. And these are things that when you go in and ask for, say, like a report from IRI, you need to get really clear about what kind of dimensions you are looking for, because the more dimensions that you ask for in your report, the more expensive it is. So you need to make sure that you know exactly what you want to look at and exactly what kind of data story you can tell with that report so that you can use it to its full extent and you can get the most out of your money spent. 
Um, so looking at product, um, basically this is, it could be a, just a general category. So it could be um, mainstream beer, it could be value beer, it could be craft beer, it could be cider, it could be wine, it could be spirits, you know, things like that that are like overarching categories. Um, you could have a specific segment like uh, like nested within craft beer, which could be the beer style. So you could be looking at IPAs as a category, which is a huge one that has multiple sub segments of IPAs, obviously. Um, it could be amber lagers. It could be um, American wheats. It could be, uh, you know, porters, stouts, uh, pilsners, things like that. And then finally, the third subset of that could be brand specific. So Julie's Brewery, here's for my brand, here's my competing brands, things like that. So you do get the competitor set, like if you were looking at like your IPA compared to other IPAs, it just depends on what you ask for, pretty much. Um, the next thing is the market. Um, this has more to do with distribution, right? So this is where the product is being sold um, and basically consists of a couple different categories. So um, they're kind of out of order on my slides, but I don't think anybody cares. The first one I usually lead with is geography. Um, so you're looking at things like, um, you know, by the way, I should have told you all at this, not only um, do you need to know a whole different language of acronyms <laughs> to interpret um, syndicated data, um, but I'm gonna give everyone a resource at the end of this where there's like a syndicated data glossary so that you can know all the little ins and outs of all these um, acronyms because it is like speaking a different language, um, kind of like being in the military or working with distributors. There's all these fun little acronyms that you need to know. So um, one in thinking about this, like looking at geography, if you were to say MULO total US, so MULO is multi-outlet. Um, there's different versions of that. That basically means you have multiple outlets and it's like the whole universe. Um, and it can be from the whole U.S. or it could be something like where I'm at right now. It could be MULO just for South Carolina and it would cover like the entire state pretty much. So not only do you need to know uh, what product categories to ask for, but you also need to know what market categories to ask for as well. Um, the other thing that it could be is channel specific. So you might want to be looking at things like the grocery channel, the um, boutique supermarket, like small grocery channel, small market channel. Um, you could be looking at, uh, let's see, what do I have on here? So grocery food, mass merchandise slash Walmart, because that's like its whole other universe, um, drug stores, dollar stores, club stores, military outlets, convenience, uh, pet stores, which is weird that we, that gets mixed up with our stuff, but, um, and then also liquor stores. Um, so those are kind of the channel dimensions that you can dig into. And finally, you can go retailer specific. So um, if you are lucky enough to have the luxury of getting ongoing uh, scan data reports and you meet, say, with um, Target twice a year to do meetings about resets, um, you could pull just scan data for like mass merchandise or super centers, things like that. Those would be the specific uh, retail specific reports that you could pull and ask for. Um, finally, period, this is pretty self-explanatory. This is um, has to do with timeframes. Um, you don't have to pull a full year compared to a full year. You can actually pull out segments, but again, be careful because the more dimensions you ask for, uh, the more expensive your report is gonna be. Um, but you can technically ask for certain weeks at a time. So you could ask for four weeks of data, you can ask for 13 weeks. You can ask for a quarter. Um, 52 weeks is a full year. There's also um, different ways that they aggregate months. So really dig into that. When you contact one of these companies, ask them to explain the timeframes to you because they're a little wonky. As you all know, um, there's 52 weeks in a year, but some months have four weeks, some months have five weeks. Um, so just know that they have to have kind of like a control group for that. So it takes a little bit of explanation. Um, what I see a lot of brands doing is actually getting uh, customized like brand specific reports and it'll compare um, the current year to the previous year and then they hang on to that. 
um, for a year, maybe two years. Maybe you could push it to three years, although our market is changing so dynamically at this point. I probably wouldn't recommend that, but that's a way that you can save like a little bit of money um, in terms of pulling brand specific reports um, for your products. So the final piece of this is actually called facts. Um, I usually refer to these as measures. That's probably not entirely correct, but um, for those of us that live in the world of like Encompass, VIP, stuff like that, I always think about things as like measures instead of facts. Um, and there are a ton. And this is specifically kind of what you're looking for in your data. So it could be a fact on price, right? With looking at pricing. Um, it could be units. It could be equivalized uh, cases, right? Case equivalents. Um, the other big one here is velocity. Um, that is a huge one that, that most um, chain retailers ask for in your buyer meetings. Um, so velocity basically means rate of sale. So it's how fast your pack size is flying off the shelf and going into consumer baskets. Um, another thing is distribution, like how much you're penetrating that market space compared to the value of the retail outlet. Um, and then it can also be based on promotions, which are things like displays, uh, pricing programs, things like that. All right. Um, I had a separate slide for tips. I feel like I've already said all these things, so I'm just going to like breeze past this really quickly. But again, can't be understated. Know what you want to see so that you don't pay for something that you don't see, don't want to see, or that doesn't tell a really nice data story. Um, try to drill down to the exact specifics that you want from your syndicated data set, and then limit when you pull reports just to save a little bit of money as well. Um, if you have an unlimited budget, knock yourself out. Just sign up for customer uh, custom reports, and then you can just get them fed to you all the time. Um, so, what kind of data story can you actually tell? by using syndicated data and scan data, this is really interesting because you, I know it seems like a repeat of what I just said, but we're actually gonna look at like what is actually measured. Um, the first thing, uh, there's basically four pieces that you can measure all the time. That is sales, distribution, price, and trade promotions. Um, again, sales refers to CEs. And I have this big yellow flag on uh, the left side of uh, my screen because this, these are the things that you're going to be identifying um, when it comes to market trends. So these are the things that you're looking for. This is the thing that you want to tell a story about. Um, you can look at volume in case equivalents, um, but also looking at volume in sales dollars. Um, it is really compelling to say, hey, we sold this many dollars of like these specific brands this year and we grew by 20% in sales dollars over last year. That's a very convincing story for a lot of people. That means you're doing something right. That means the beer is moving. That's a great thing to tell buyers and a great thing to represent your brand. People always talk about how do you differentiate yourself in the market to buyers? You do it with data. That's how we do things. Um, that will make you stand out more. Um, the other thing that you can use this for is sizing up a market to enter. So anything that you're not in already, um, you could look at different geographic areas or different channels or different retailers to kind of size up um, the ACV of that market in saying like, okay, they do this many million dollars of sales in craft beer every year. That might be a good outlet for us to be in. Might be a good retailer to consider. Um, so you have access to that as well. The other thing is you can see the penetration of your competitors as well, which is a really nice thing to have. Um, also, you can see the relevancy of your brand throughout different markets. So maybe for some reason, um, like thinking about my backyard because I'm from Colorado, um, maybe Julie's Brewery as an example, totally fictitious. Um, maybe I'm doing really well in the Denver area. My velocity is high. The distribution is good. We're bringing in good retail dollars. Um, but maybe in Durango, I'm not doing that great. So maybe certain retailers want to carry me in the Denver market, but maybe they don't want to carry us in Durango. Or I need to spend more sales time out in the market in Durango to bring up our sales dollars, right? So it can tell you those kind of things and give you some direction for where to go um, and also to prove why you should be in the places that you're in. 
The other thing is price. Um, so, oh goodness, I have district again, this is out of order on my slides. I don't think any of y'all care. Um, price is another marketing driver um, that's measured with scan data. So like I said, it's the price that goes across the scanner. It's not necessarily the price of your case going in. Um, it basically tells you what retail customers are willing to pay for your products. So instead of, you know, we all know the pricing game is really hard to do. It's a gamble, like you charge too much, people aren't gonna pay that much, they're gonna trade to something else. You charge too little, you're not making enough to cover your cost of goods. You know, it's, um, it's a very hard thing to do. And then you also have to worry about factors in the economy, like what everybody's going through right now with inflation. Um, what you actually need for a break-even point or when your company can be profitable. There's a whole bunch of things that go into this. Um, so having scan data will actually tell you what the market can bear for your products and items that you're putting out on the shelf um, so that you can measure either growth or decline. Um, also, uh, it can help you track pricing trends in different market segments. Um, so maybe you have a six pack priced at like $13.99 and maybe it's doing really well in the grocery channel and that's like a really good fit. You're just, you know, moving beer hand over fist um, and it's got a great turn rate and the grocery stores are really happy. But maybe you put that same six pack in a gas station and it just doesn't move and it sits there and you're stuck with like a dusty shelf turd and you aren't able to move anything your product might not be right for the convenience store channel, but you won't know that unless you have the data to prove that. So that's another reason why this stuff is so powerful. Um, you can also see how well the price range of all your various products are doing over time in the markets that it's in. Um, so where can you like double down and try to recreate success, whether that's a geographic location or a certain sector of the market or maybe a certain um, package size as well. Um, so it can give you those, you know, heads up and competitive advantages um, as well. The other thing is distribution. Um, so the way that distribution is measured, just it's measured just like price, right? Like how it comes across the scanner. So you can tell where it was sold, uh, what type of place it was sold in, you know, things like that. You can also tell how many items you're selling within certain segments or within a certain uh, retailer. Um, or for a certain style, right? There's like a million different um, elements that you can pull into this. Um, technically, it will not tell you what's on that shelf. It's only going to tell you what people buy. So you might have other products in there, but if it never <laughs> goes across the scanner, it's not going to come out in syndicated data. I hate to tell you that. Um, it does happen sometimes, very rarely. But um, you can also see how deep you're actually going into certain market channels or categories or certain retailers. So um, maybe you're selling one product with a certain chain of retailers. Maybe you're selling, you know, eight, who knows? Um, but being able to have things like price point, size, style, retailer, channel, um, you know, package size, uh, and then how many products you have within like a certain segment is gonna tell you like, do you have room to grow? Are you totally saturated? Are you maxed out? Is there room to add additional things? Can you recreate success? Or do you need to pull something that is not looking so good and maybe go through a little bit of ski rationalization? And then finally, the last part of this is trade promotion. Um, just to be honest with you, uh, you better be pretty deep into selling with national accounts and things like this and selling beer in multiple states across various areas to justify the cost of having trade promotion details in your standardized reports, um, just because this measures just like special situations, right? So um, it's gonna measure things like a pricing promotion, um, a certain type of market activation that you've set up with a retailer um, or in a certain geographic area, things like that, just kind of things out of the ordinary and then how that sort of stacks up against your competitors as well. All right, so I keep talking about uh, reports um, and oh my goodness gracious, I got way ahead of myself. All right, I, I'm gonna give everybody a copy of the slides so that you can um, also see these. I went off on a tangent and completely explained all of these slides to you already, but <laughs> um, this talks about the sales component um, in looking at dollar sales, sizing up additional markets um, that you wanna get into 
and allows tracking sales of your own uh, products in certain channels or locations. Price, again, how much people are willing to bear to buy your products in the market. Um, and then also distribution, where that product is being sold. Um, and it can show the size of like your market share or your distribution footprint, but also the depth, which uh, specific items. And by the way, these are called different things in Nielsen and IRI. Um, I think one is called like units sold and the other one is um, units scanning or something like that. Um, to be honest with you, I, I deal with this data all the time, but it is not something that I'm privy to on a daily basis. So, you know, have some space and grace here. Um, and then finally, promotion. This dimension allows you to track sales during times of programming, activations, discounts, displays, organized trade promotions, et cetera. All of that falls under that umbrella. And then you, you might not need your own, but it is good to see what the competitors are doing in the same space. Um, all right, so let's talk about some of the reporting uh, formats. Um, pretty typical is a ranking report. That's pretty basic. That's what most people start with. Um, I was lucky enough to discover um, this website that is out there called CPG Data Tip Sheet. Um, it is absolute gold. Um, it's where I cut my teeth on learning how to interpret syndicated data and scan data. Um, it is not specific for alcohol. It is covering all consumer packaged goods. So that's why some of my reports in here have to do with like muffins or food or things like that. Because again, I'm not going to show anybody's data firsthand, but I do want you to have a feeling for what things actually look like. Um, so this is basically how your brand or item stacks up against uh, your competitors through various dimensions. You can see uh, competitive item A, our item B, item C, item so on and so forth. You've got dollar sales, you've got unit sales, or in our case, it would be like case equivalent sales and then average price, and then the same dimensions with a change over the previous year. Um, I want to say one little thing, and that is dollar sales are not the end-all be-all of ranking reports. Um, I would encourage you to put other things in there like volume and price um, if you can, if you can afford it, um, because it does tell a better story. Um, and also uh, sometimes um, and especially right now with pricing being weird and inflate, inflation being bizarre and people doing price increases, um, sometimes your dollar sales will look really good because you have higher priced items, um, but the volume is not there because you've just gone up to a higher price, price point. So that's my spiel about that. All right, looking at distribution opportunities. So basically um, distribution is measured in something called ACV, which is all commodity value. It's basically the total retail dollar value of an entire market segment or re like a retailer, pretty much. Um, so like you can see this with Fantastic Foods, uh, 52 weeks, the dollar sales uh, look like half a million dollars basically. And that brilliant brand um, occupies like 62% of that basic sale pretty much. So. You can see this over here to the side. It's kind of a breakout. Um, this actually has multiple stores instead of just one. Um, and this is often expressed as a percent ACV instead of just the total ACV so that you can see what kind of percentage distribution you have for your specific brand. Um, there's also another breakout of this down here that's a little bit more specific. It's not quite good enough to say you have a percent AT ACV um, in a certain outlet, but it's good to look at weighted um, distribution. Um, and this is the formula for that. Like you, the, looking at the weighted distribution, it basically weights out the retailer sizes um, and puts it according to where you're actually scanning and showing up. Um, a good measure for breweries to, mem uh, to monitor, honestly, is percent ACV or weighted percent ACV, um, which means you're looking at where your products are being sold compared to the total ACV of certain outlets. Um, and you can also measure the depth um, of your distribution. Again, going, oh, see, here it is in my notes. Average item selling, which I believe is, mm, I think that's IRI. And then you've also got um, average items carried, uh, which is from Nielsen. Um, so it's not just great to have items show up at like a super target, but it's also good to know that you have like four items that are showing up and scanning in that super target or in that channel, right? Okay, 
This is another big one because this is really important to chain buyers. I get asked about this all the time, and that is velocity. Um, velocity expressed within the syndicated data network is called dollar SPPD. Um, basically, what that stands for is dollar sales per point of distribution. That's all that means. Um, it means that if this little retail outlet right here, let me just circle this, is worth half a million dollars and you've got a percent ACV distribution of 62%, that basically means that for every store that you could add um, and get a higher amount of percent ACV, which is your distribution, you would be adding $8,000 or $8,065 to be exact. Um, so this is a handy little chart over here. This is just a theoretical situation of what that would look like. So you can actually visualize and predict as you increase your distribution within this specific retailer, right? Um, that what that would look like and then how much more revenue that you can realize from that. Um, that is something really important for um, national account buyers to know because then they can kind of assume like a general revenue that might come in, like an average of that basically by having your products on the shelf. All right, I am coming to the end. I hope you are still with me. Get another cup of coffee or sip of coffee. Finally, we're gonna look at price and promotion. This gets very confusing, I'm not gonna lie. This, even I still get confused with all of this, so don't feel bad if you feel like you're drinking out of a fire hose here. Um, but the average, ooh, sorry, jumped ahead there. All right, the average price um, and also looking at promotions. Again, the retail price is um, the price measures, measured as things go across the checkout counter, right? Um, average price, is actually a calculation. So it's a reflection of the everyday price, which is the base price, um, the non-promoted or what's called the non-merch price, and then also the sale price. So it's kind of like percent ACV where like you have like weighted distribution. Um, average price is kind of the same thing, but with a price point instead of like the number of dollars that are going through the retail outlet, right? Um, so you can look and see this lovely like muffin example right here. Um, you've got average price per unit over here. Um, you've got the base price per unit, and then you've got any promo price per unit. And you can see it tells a different story, right? You've got different price points. It tells a different story. Um, this is 12 weeks. It's for a certain time period. That's from 2014. You can tell this example is super old, but it's just an example it is what it is. Um, and then you've got a breakout of the promotional stuff over here. What's interesting about the chart on the right is that it's giving me the same data as the chart on the left, but it's for specific retailers. So you can look across and see like which one is performing best, right? Like, do I need to create a pricing promotion or like a display promotion or something within certain retailers or within certain outlets, right? Um, this is why it's so incredibly important to know exactly what you want from your reports because there are really this many options. Um, and it's also super helpful to know, like if you're presenting products uh, for authorization, like in chain accounts, um, it allows you to see how certain price points are performing um, so that you can try to fit like, you know, are you even a good fit for that retailer? Um, your brands are not going to fit into every single retail outlet or every single segment. There's, it's just not, it's not like a perfect puzzle every single time, right? Um, okay, so I'm going to say thank you. <laughs> I'm going to say thank you with this. I am actually going to stop sharing. I am going to jump over to the StreamYard feed and see, holy moly, there is a lot of stuff in the chat and I'm going to try to, Andrew, feel free to jump in if you're around and you want to help me. Um, oh, Josh is here. Awesome. This is great. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'm going to hang around for just a few minutes. Um, if you want to put things, oh, Andrew can't jump in. Sorry. He's facilitating like a bazillion things, which is totally fine. <laughs> so um, if anyone has any questions, um, thanks, John. I hope it was informative. I hope. I know I was talking really fast, but there was a lot to cover. Um, I'm going to jump into the, uh, I think I did this last time for the spring conference. Um, 
I'll jump into the craft beer professionals group and um, I'll put my slides in there if anybody wants to see them. Um, but I hope everyone is enjoying their time here. Thank you to all the sponsors for keeping this like 100% free. I am super honored to be doing This is actually my fourth time um, to be in the virtual conference and I try to bring something new and helpful. Um, Jamar, I love North Carolina in you too. So thank you for being here. Um, and oh, Andrew gave a teaser. Yeah, CBP Connects at, in South Carolina, in North Charleston next year. <laughs> All right, that was a spoiler. Um, so everybody make plans, book your flights now because they're crazy expensive. So, um, all right. I hope everybody enjoyed themselves. I don't see any questions in the comments, so I'm going to run, but um, I'm in the group all the time. If anybody wants to ping me, if some of this didn't make sense, you know, things like that, get a hold of me and I am happy to answer your questions. Thanks so much and have a good conference. Bye.